Hey everyone, a quick video today. What I wanna show you is how to use the paginator class in Django. So anytime you have, let's say, a bunch of results from a query and you don't wanna display them all on one page, but instead you wanna paginate them, what you can do is you can use the paginator class in Django that will make this really easy to paginate. So you don't have to write the code yourself because it can get a bit tricky when you try to handle all the edge cases for pagination. So it's nice to have a method of doing it without having to write your own code. So what I have here is I already have a view set up and I basically created some data and put it into the database. It's basically just saying stuff and then a number. And then I have some items and then I uh, have a context that's empty. If I say something like items is stuff items and then go to the template, then I can loop over that. So I can say for item in items and then uh, we have item.name and I'll just put a line break here should be br like that now in the loop and I'll open this up and we see I just have 100 things so what I wanted to do is I want to paginate these things here so to do that if I go back to views I'm going to use the paginator class so to use it you import it first so from django.core.paginator we're going to import a class called Paginator, so capital P for the class. And to use it, all you have to do is take your list of items, so stuff items. And by the way, this can be used as a, with a regular Python list as well. But here, these are the query results, which is something like a list. And what I can do is I can say Paginator and then stuff items, and then the number of, pay, or the number of items per page. So let's say 20 items per page, and I'll create a Paginator instance. So P equals paginator. And then to get the results on a particular page, I can say P dot page and then pass a page number. So let's say I want the things on page two. I can say page equals P dot page two. So remember we, we're using the, the instance of paginator here and then calling a method called page and it's going to return everything for the second page. And instead of stuff items, I'll pass this to the context. So now when I refresh, I get stuff 20 through stuff 39. So there are 20 items here, but it doesn't start at zero. It starts at uh, 20 and it goes to 39. So if I change this to say four, it's going to give me different items. So 60 through 79. And a typical trick that people use for this is instead of hard coding the page number, is you get the page number from the query string. So to do that, I can say like page num equals request dot get dot get and page. And then I can pass this page number here. And I can also have a default. So if it doesn't exist, it just give me the first page. So then I can use it like this. I can go into the URL bar and say page equals three and I get 40 through 59. Or I can do page five, I get 80 through 99. And page one, zero through 19. And if I remove it completely, it still gives me page one. So that's typically how it would be used. And if we try to access a page that doesn't exist, this is what happens. So if I say uh, page equals 10, so there are only 100 items, and if there are 20 items per page, then I only have five pages. So I get this error if I try to access a page number that doesn't exist. And that's just an exception that you can uh, catch so here, where is the exception? Uh, this empty page, and I can put it around here. So if I go to the part where I access the page, I can say try, and then uh, accept uh, empty page. Then I can say page equals p dot page one, right? And this empty page should come from the same place so paginator and now if I try this it just gives me page one if I try to access a page that doesn't exist so if I put like 50 here it gives me page one so if I want the total number of pages uh, that's pretty easy to do and here I'll just print it out I take that paginator instance and I can say so number of pages a print p dot num underscore pages and then if I refresh the page I see number of pages is five. And if I change the 
count per page to let's say 12 instead of 20 and run the page again. I get zero through 11 there and I see the number of pages is nine. And then finally, another typical use case is having like links for the next page and the previous page. So to do that, what I'll do is underneath, I'll put two links. So I'll say, uh, this one's going to be uh, the previous page, and then I'll put one next to it for the next page. All right, so next page. So I have previous page and next page. And what I wanna make sure happens is like I'm on page one right now, so there is no page zero, so I don't want previous page to appear. And likewise, when I'm on the last page, I don't want next page to appear because there is no next page. So to do that, all you have to do is check to see if they exist. So I can take the current page. So if a page dot has previous, and then it will display if it has previous. So let's just verify that really quick. And we see it goes away. And I can do the same thing for next. So page dot has next. And then end if. So remember this one has 12 pages. So uh, if I go to page 11, let's see, not page 123, page 12. Page 10, page two, okay, page two. How many pages? Oh, it has nine pages, actually. I have 12 per page. So we have uh, page nine here, page eight, and we see previous isn't appearing. So let's see if page has previous. So this is returning false in all cases. So this is pretty easy to handle because I don't have it named page in here, it's item. So, or actually items. So items has previous and items has next. So let's try that again. Okay, so we have previous page and next page. If I go to page nine, we only have previous page, so that's right. And if I go to page one, we have next page with no previous page, right? So that's why it's a good idea to test when it should work and when it shouldn't work because it's easy to trick yourself into thinking that you have working code. So what I wanna do is I want to have those actually link to the next page. So let me make sure I have a name on my URL. Let me go here, the URLs. Okay, so name is index. So if I go to my template here, and then here I'll say uh, URL, the name is gonna be index, and then I'll just append the query string myself, and I'll say uh, items, items next, uh, page number like this, and it would be similar for the previous one. So I'll just update this, and then this should be a previous page number. All right, so let's see if it works. And it doesn't, I didn't use double quotes, I use single quotes around here, or single curly brackets. Let me update that, and now. We see page two and the items are changing. If I keep going, eventually I'll get to the end and then I no longer can access next page and then previous page works. And when I get back down to zero, the previous page should disappear just like that. So I hope I could help you understand how pagination works a little more in Django. There's a little more you can do with this, but this is really the basics. Uh, this is probably most of what you will wanna do when you're doing pagination in your app. So if you have any questions about this, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.